Welcome to the Susan Brinder Show. It's all about you. Featuring shows on health and wellness, the performing arts, politics, and people who inspire you to be your best. And now, here's Susan Brinder. I'm Susan Brinder, and this is the Susan Brinder Show. New York City born and raised, Talina began her career training quite early as a professional singer, clarinetist in the middle school, and ultimately graduating from the High School of Music and Art, the Fame High School. She was the first person who began singing in a girls group, well, maybe not the first person, but certainly the person who began singing in a girls group of which one of the members was recently inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I want to welcome my guest, Helena Lind. Hi. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's absolutely a very interesting thing that you've done. You went to a school called the Music and Art School in New York City. What was that like? Well, that school uh, was the best experience, in addition to having my children, um, of my life. That was a school that many, many, many people auditioned for and submitted portfolios for, you know, in the art um, department and didn't make it. So those of us who were fortunate enough, and I really mean that, um, fortunate enough to be accepted, it was it was a dream come true. It just was. There were all these kids running around the school who were musicians and artists and you know, it was like nirvana <laughs> being there. Yes, Alina, you know, I think our audience needs to know a little bit more about you. So I want you to start at the point where you began your musical career. Why don't you tell our audience more about that? Okie dokie. Um, that would start at age five. <laughs> Actually running to the neighborhood in the Bronx, New York, singing with all the African-American kids. It was always in my soul to do that, gospel, R&B, Motown, if I could say that. Um, it dates me, but, I, you know, that's where it was at. And uh, my twin sister and I started singing um, kind of semi-professionally, almost like by the age of 10. And then getting into the high school, we were 14, and the person, if I could mention her name on the air, that uh, was always looking for two other voices to fill in, it's called a triad, a three-part harmony, um, who did uh, become very famous, Laura Nero. Um, she found us, and we were always looking for one more voice, which was her, to complete the triad. So that's when we were really singing big, big, you know, uh, how can I say it, um, fabulous moment of our group, the Preludes. We were known in the school and much later even now for that. And uh, so it was like teen years, starting like that. And then through the years, I, I've been singing professionally all my life, well, all you, my life. Yes, and you mentioned Laura Nero. Now, explain to our audience what type of music that you and Laura Nero did together with your sister. That's a very good question, Susan. Um, thank you. Uh, we, and again, it dates us, but back in the day, it was the girls' groups. And the movie that just came out a year ago was uh, 20 Feet from Stardom about Darlene Love, all the girls' group uh, groups from back in the day, all the backup singers. And so we were doing those kind of songs, um, R&B, rock, pop, um, uh, girls' group songs, the Shirelles, Will You Love Me Tomorrow, um, all those kinds of songs. And that's how it started. Uh, Laura continued on in that vein of um, kind of jazz, rock, girls' groups, soul. And that's what I've been doing all my life. But the funny thing is I also continued with my education, getting a um, – a degree in music education and graduate school, so uh, adding classical music to the mix, hmm. which is 
really, you know, funny in a way, but I love it. It's no, great. it's not funny at all. In fact, I think it's very interesting that you were able to sing not only rock and roll, but you can also sing classical music. I mean, classical music is pretty tough, don't you think? Yes, and it's funny. I'm also a bassoonist, and I was a band teacher. I play a lot of instruments, piano, and I, I actually had the great, great fortune of being in a classical chorus in uh, Buffalo, New York, when I was in school there by Niagara Falls, and we we actually sang with the Buffalo Philharmonic in Klein Hands, which is the Philharmonic Hall of the Buffalo Symphony, um, with Robert Shaw, Felicia Montalegra, who was Leonard Bernstein's wife, all kinds of uh, fabulous people. Pablo Casals came from Spain. Hmm. to conduct the chorus. Wow. And, yeah, and even in New York, I studied bassoon with the most incredible, incredible, famous bassoonist, Frank Ruggieri of the New York Philharmonic. So it's all mixed in there. Kind of interesting. Hmm. Well, you've had quite a career. Now, let, let's let's get back to something important. You talked about, of course, playing music and playing with oh, some of the modes incredible people, but um, one of the things is that I really would like to know what inspired you to to play a bassoon and to sing and to do all the things that you do. Who was your inspiration? Very good question. Really, really good question, Susan. What's really interesting is as a young child, it, it really wasn't anybody. It was just, it, you know, a lot of artists, it comes from their soul, it comes from inside something. It's like a calling that you wake up one day and you know, you know who you are and you have to go and do that which is calling you. And I remember when I was eight years old sitting on the couch in the living room in the Bronx listening to the radio and I was hearing singers, you know, of course, on the radio, and I'm hearing vibrato, you know, that, that a pulse in the voice, ah, you know, that pulse. Mm-hmm. And I'm switching the channels, and I'm saying, ah, oh, I hear it in everybody. Wow. I have to practice that because they're all singers, and I'm a singer. I remember the moment when I was eight years old and said that. Hmm. I better practice the way they're pra- singing on the radio <laughs> because they are singers and I'm a singer. So I have to do that, which they're doing, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then instruments came. Um, also a great, great school, very fortunate. Uh, junior High School 143, Tatard Junior High School in the Bronx was a brand new school. The emphasis was music. You had to audition to get into the band or orchestra classes. They had built they built a, a stage, a brand new stage with practice rooms underneath the stage. And more kids landed up going to the High School of Music and Art from that school than any other junior high school in the city. So I picked clarinet, you know, and I loved it. And then um Piano, of course, my greatest love uh, instrumentally is piano. Um, and uh, what happened is they were always, when I made the high school of music and art on singing and clarinet, they were always looking for bassoonists, you know, which is the base of the woodwind section, because there's so few of them around. And they would come to the clarinetist and say, who wants to switch? And, so that, and I switched. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Nice. So that's how... Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? I landed up playing bassoon. Well, yeah. let, let me ask you something. Um, you you know, because you teach so many people, how it resonates, how the music resonates with them. Um, and young people today, they, they sing rap, they sing hip-hop. But what about your music? Can they identify with that? You're asking wonderful questions. Yes, and I'm going to say something kind of funny, which is um, I'm really grateful for shows like The Voice and American Idol um, because they have real songs on those shows. They'll have a week of Frank Sinatra or a week of Elton John or whatever. And um, young people, as I've been teaching for years, in addition to the performing and the writing and the comedy and all that, um, they will come to me and will want 
to sing the song that they heard on American Idol, having no idea who sang it originally, but one of the young people, singers on these shows, sang it, and they loved it. A, an example is I, I had a student who was um, 14 at the time, or maybe a little younger, and somebody had, on American Idol, had done their version of um, Always on My Mind, the Willie Nelson song, which I love. It's one of my songs. And it was such a pleasure to teach it to her. And one day I said to her, you know, uh, that song was originally um, written and recorded by Willie Nelson. And she said something like, Who's Willie Nelson? Ah, there you go. <laughs> so a lot of young people, of course, through the decades, um, and we were the same because we don't know the music, let's say the 30s or the 40s, because that's how it works, you know. The new generation comes up, and they have music of their day. But because of the shows that are on TV, the singing shows, um, this young people are exposed to songs from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, like that, and on up. And so uh, they really do know what's going on. Even the Beatles, if I could say a little bit more about that, um, it's amazing because of every terrible thing like 9-11 and Katrina. You know, they always have the big stars coming out as uh, doing the big show fundraisers, you know, on TV mm-hmm. for support. Well, they always save Paul McCartney for the end to do Let It Be, which is one of my big songs. It was in my uh, one woman show, my first one, um, that Don't Tell Mamas in New York City, Let It Be. So it came around with, well, 9-11. It came around with Katrina. And so now, uh, so now all the young people, they know the, Let It Be. They know the Beatles keeps coming back around but um you know thank god it is what i'm saying again for these shows that expose young people to songs from many many decades you know um helena there is there is this uh thing about music that kind of affects the brain and the way it affects the brain is that it makes people very happy and it also has an effect in other ways i'll give you an example i once met a guy who actually had tourette's syndrome and every mm-hmm. time he hit a key on the piano he didn't look it was like right. one of the most amazing experiences that i've ever had just watching that that person because you know people with tourette syndrome they tick they have a tick no Correct. tick it yes. would wipe it out and also older people with alzheimer's disease when they hear music you know how they forget everything but they don't forget a song and so don't you think that music is just a wonderful way to really get people to be healthy and mentally both mentally and also physically? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I've made a study of that since college. I was taking a graduate course in psychology, and he was at New York University. He was a brilliant uh, professor, and he had us do a term paper in a graduate um, master's format, like 40 pages, and I picked music therapy and the effects on autism and schizophrenia. The reason I'm bringing that up is it began then, that my uh, inquiry and, and understanding the connection, because the term that kept coming up even back then when I was in college was non-threatening. Music is so non-threatening. It gets through to people where nothing else does. And now through the years, thank God for um, Dr. Oliver Sacks, um, who is one of my heroes, also Albert Einstein, great musician, great physicist. You know, it's a very interesting thing how music affects people in ways they can't even describe. For example, I, I met somebody at the at Lincoln Center and this person was a jazz artist who played the piano and the interesting thing about him was that he had Tourette syndrome and Tourette syndrome is where you get a tick and every time he hit a note no more tick 
So don't you think, Kalina, that music is a powerful tool for people with all kinds of disease like Tourette's, like Alzheimer's, and various other diseases? Absolutely. It's been proven. Uh, listening to 10 minutes of, I think it's the Mozart E-flat piano concerto, actually raises IQ points. Um, Tourette's, uh, there's examples of uh, uh, this young man who's a drummer, and when he's drumming, there is no Tourette's, you know. There, um, there's uh, all kinds of therapies going on now where people in comas, people in comas, uh, which is the movie Awakenings with Robert De Niro based on Dr. Oliver Sacks' study, mm-hmm. studies, where if they put music by the, um, beds, at the foot of the beds of people in comas, um, music of their generation, um, they will come out of their comas. You know, there's one example, a a 94-year-old man, very religious. They put the music by him. He was in a coma. He got up. He remembered all the words. He started dancing. It is so powerful, so powerful. Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, now I want to talk to you about your music. So you can give us a little taste of your music if you don't mind, because I would like to get a sense of what Helena Lynn sounds like. Oh, well, (laughs) you know, I will, you want me to sing right now, something like that? I'll sing uh, just a little bit. Maybe I should do a little bit of Let It Be a Beatles a little bit, okay? Okay, Um, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, oh, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, Oh, let it be. Yeah. That's beautiful. I, I let it be. Yeah. Words of wisdom. And so let's let's talk about wisdom. What kind of wisdom would you give to people about what you do? Okay. Well, it's an interesting another interesting question, Susan. Yeah. Very good. People who come to me, because I've done many, many workshops, uh, young people, older people, the ones who have talent, I will say, there are some words that are going to go with you all the days of your life, suffering and sacrifice, (laughs) but it's in the best way, because it's worth it, because we must follow our calling, and if you have that feeling to be involved in the arts, in music, it is the most glorious moment. And, you know, um, how can I say it? It's not for the faint of heart. And to love it is not enough. If you just love it, you're not going to continue with it. You have to need it like the air you breathe. (laughs) And if that's the case, it's going to be a very interesting life that you will lead. Wow. So what else creatively have you done in performance? Well, okay, I have been doing a lot of things through the years. Um, It was always music, music, music until my mentor um, mentioned to me, Maria McKenna, fabulous woman, would say to me, Helena, you have to do comedy. And I would say, Maria, I'm a musician. What are you saying to me? Mm-hmm. And it took two years for me to have the courage to get up a comedy stage and do stand-up. But I did that. It was fun. It was fabulous. And that led to, uh, as I mentioned, um, two one-woman shows off-Broadway, New York City at Don't Tell Mamas and at the Triad, where I combined comedy, drum, and music. 
I've done that. It was great. I, I write, you know, I've written songs. They're on my CDs. I have two of them. Um, I also have um, a, lot, a number of things in the works in terms of writings. Uh, I have written material, created material for TV, uh, etc. You know, Helena, you are uh, doing some of the most creative things in performance. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about that. Thank you. Uh, it started with music, and it, I'll always have music in my life. Uh, but it also led to comedy, doing stand-up comedy. That was a hoot, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, interestingly enough, it led to writing uh, two one-woman shows off-Broadway in New York City, where I combined the music with comedy with drama, which was, it, it's just an expansion. It just was a wonderful experience, and that continues. I have two CDs uh, with original material and covers, which is uh, other people's material. I've also written for TV, etc., and I'm in the middle of a number of projects now in the writing arena. So, Music, comedy, writing, like that. Those are the things. Hmm. And so you're very versatile. And and so what are some of the musical highlights of your career? Okay, there's been many, many highlights of my career. Being with the Preludes with Laura Nero and my twin sister, Phyllis, that was big highlight. We pronounced it wrong on purpose because the musical term is, re- is really preludes, but we said preludes. Being with my band Willow, it was a band uh, that I was in throughout practically my whole life. Um, the two one-woman shows, Helena's Back and Apples and Oranges, those were highlights. And there was another. I was in a wonderful, wonderful moment. I was in an all-African-American gospel show for four years. Oh. It was called, yes, yes, he, it was called He Will Not Change, and that was a big highlight of my life. And um, there was another one that I'm just remembering in relation to that is working with uh, the Josh White singers. Uh, Josh White was very famous African-American. Um, I was invited to sing on a recording um, with them, that from what we understood many years ago when the Pope, believe it or not, was doing his cities tour in the United States, uh, he was in Detroit and he heard us singing that song that we recorded that I was part of um, with the Josh White Singers. He walks on the water. So these are interesting moments and there are many, many in my life, but just... Those are the highlights that I'm thinking of right now. Well, that sounds very interesting. Your your life has been quite a a story in a sense because um, look at all of the different things that you're doing and how you're doing them is is quite amazing. So so now let's talk a little bit about what your what projects you're working on now is there something special that you can tell our audience about yes you know it's funny i can't say you know um too much about it um but one is believe it or not another singing group uh baby boomer singing group girls i it's funny conceptually it's like the almost golden girls but of course we're much younger and and um rocking out Rock, pop, gospel, blue soul, R and B, um, and that's one uh, project. There's another one that has to do with my family and background of uh, World War II um, that I'm working on. There's and there's just a few writing projects that involve music that I am in the middle of, and. Uh, including uh, teaching and bringing that together in my own um, way. (laughs) And so it's teaching, writing, music in these ways. And um, when they're complete, I will let you know where they're going and where 
where you can see me and um, et cetera. Let's take these three different things. It's writing, it's comedy, it's it's being a, a singer, all of those things. And if, if you were to choose just one of those things, which one would you choose? Let me ask you, to, to do exclusively just by itself? Uh, yes, just, of, all one of, thing? of all of the things that you're doing, which one gives you the most satisfaction? That's a tough one, Susan. <laughs> That's really a tough one. At this stage of my life, Maybe the comedy and the writing with the sprinkling of the music in, in and out of that, if I can say that. I sneak all three in. You notice I snuck all three in. Yes. And, and but, so, but, so yeah. tell, us, tell the audience of why um, these things give you the kind of feeling that they do. Uh, when we're born the way I was born, uh, to express myself as artists do um, <clears throat> through these vehicles and other vehicles artistically um, it's it's cathartic meaning it's it's self-expression we're able to like some people I don't know how they talk about their feelings how they think how they feel about different things that are going on in the world but artists are born to express through writing, through music, through drama, through comedy, whatever way. So this is what I do to express myself, actually. Mm -hmm. That's what artists do. That's right. And what would you tell young people today about becoming a performer? When they're talented, young people who come to me in workshop or whatever, um, I will say to them, if you're talented, There'll be two words that you're going to have go with you all the days of your life, suffering and sacrifice, but it's worth it and it's a good, it's a good suffering and sacrifice because if there's talent there, two things in addition, you can't just love what you're doing. It will not, you, you will not be able to continue on with it. You have to need it like the air you breathe. And if you do, it's going to be a glorious life, a very interesting life. Um, that's what I say to young people. So keep on keeping on. Uh, you'll never be bored. <laughs> and you're going to live this magical life uh, in the arts. Mm. Those are wonderful things to say to young people because they have to have faith in this kind of career because it's not easy, is it? No, no. I, I'm going to quote someone who was a friend. I studied with him. He brought the Beatles to this country. Oh, that's a highlight, knowing Sid Bernstein. Uh, he brought the Beatles to this country. And I'm going to quote what he said. Uh, he said, you have to have a stomach of steel. <laughs> you know, really, you really, it is not for the faint of heart. Even, And I have known talented uh, people, really talented, who dropped out because they just, they just couldn't take it. It just was too overwhelming. And so you really have to be strong. You have to need it like the air you breathe. And you have to be really talented. That's a criteria that must be in place. Mm -hmm. The talent and the calling for that particular talent mm. of, uh, that you possess. So I suppose you're not uh, one of those people who, who have faint of heart. I think you're one of the people who actually is realistic about where you're at and what you want to do, and that is a very special quality. So we're going to finish up on the last question, which is who are some of the artists who have shaped you musically through your throughout the years? That is another great question, and it's going to start with number one, Mozart. I'm going to tell you now. Mozart to me is, I have no words to express. I actually wrote a rock song about him, believe it or not, uh, that's on my, um, my CDs. Uh, Mozart, Jackie Wilson, top of the line R&B artist. Uh, Eva Cassidy is somebody who passed away very young, and she is one of the best singers I've ever heard in my life. Uh, should I continue? I have a few more here. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, let's tell yeah. the audience. Sure. Yes, Whitney Houston, unbelievable, unbelievable artist in her day, in her day. Judy Collins. Mm-hmm. 
okay? Oh, boy. Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan, okay? I'm going to say the best for last. Ry Cooter, the musicologist um, from who did Buena Vista Social Club, love him. And Bette Midler, Bette Midler is my... <laughs> I, I don't. I love her. I she just moves my soul. Moves my soul. Oh yeah. And in fact, it's interesting because I looked at your picture and you have a little bit of a similarity to Bette Midler. Um, how does that make you feel? Yeah. I, I'm going to tell you a quick story if if I have another minute. Go or for so. it. I, I, it's so funny how you got that one so right. <laughs> well, I was in the airport in Paris in the Charles the Gaulle Airport, okay, we start with that scene, and long story short, really making it short, from across the airport, I hear that, that, <laughs> and I knew she wasn't at the airport, and I'm turning around, and I'm going, me, me, right? from across the airport, <laughs> that, so there you go. There you okay? go, right. There it is. Okay. okay. I always like to give my guests the last word. And how do people in our audience find Helena Lind? And how do they buy your music? Thank you. Okay. There is one CD uh, on cdbaby.com called Willow. It was my band. And uh, there are four originals on that that I wrote. And there are 12 songs. Uh, and that's the one that's currently available, Willow on CDBaby.com. And the rest is coming. Uh, there's a few other projects coming out um, with newer material um, very soon in the near future. But that would be the one, Willow, Helena Lind, Willow, CDBaby.com uh, at this time. Mm-hmm. So now take us out on a song, Helena, and We'll say goodbye to you now. My guest has been Helena Lind, who is a singer, performer, a writer, a composer, and she's a very unique guest. Thank you for being on my show, Helena Lind. Thank you so much. And uh, to sing the line of the song, yes? Go for it. I had everything in my time that would make a girl feel good and fine. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. Some say love, it is a hunger, an endless aching need. I say love, it is a flower, and you it's only see. Thank you for listening to the Susan Brender Show. 